consultation. <laughs> this actor who plays Jake, he's a good looking dude. But whether or not you're good looking or not, sometimes God just decides no beard on your cheeks. And that is what they have decided for Jake. He looks he looks like it, the 127 hours guy hadn't bothered sawing his arms off and it's just <laughs> stuck there. I like it under this rock. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like an insurrectionist on a castaway island where yeah. there's nobody and no government. <laughs> Should be crying in a cage at CPAC. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it soothes the Balrog. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. I agree. I loved this movie. I agree with it. By accident, they made me agree with it. Right? It's pretty great. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Now I'm seeing it. It, it, it you, is. You, you, how about a little less poison? It? The movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to find a protagonist in it, but yeah. All right. So Heath, tell us what will we be breaking down today? God is the protagonist, Noah. God. Oh is well, the of course, of course. <laughs> we watched one church. Okay, so before even watching, I decided to call the plot. I just wrote this down <laughs> at the beginning. I had not watched it. I read like the two sentences on Amazon. And I was like, okay, it's going to be a cautionary tale about a country being dominated by one single religion and how to solve that with evangelical Christianity. <laughs> it was yes. exactly that. <laughs> yes. Was. They never hear it. No. Nope. They never it's, notice. Even when they do the thing in their movie that their movie's supposed to be against and they don't they don't even realize that that it's amazing. No, there's bad guys. That's what I meant by I agree with this movie. Bad guys according to the movie, are constantly saying very reasonable shit for two hours. And I was just constantly, like, constantly yeah. agree. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you enjoyed the last 500 years of Christianity making everyone drink the exact same Kool-Aid, you'll love this cautionary tale about making sure you've got the right flavor. Yeah, it's, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's a, like, normally these movies, because we've seen a bazillion movies now where, you know, the government forces everybody to be one religion or whatever. Normally, those are presented as, like, problematic because they usher in the apocalypse. But <laughs> but in this movie, they're just anti-unity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? They're just like, oh, that would be fucking terrible if it wasn't ours. Our At religion. one point, they're like, the gates of hell have opened, and then they forgot. And it was just the anti-unity thing for the whole mm -hmm. movie. Yep. The protagonist, a protagonist of this film, says the words, Jews go to heaven, unironically. <laughs> yes. Angrily. Yeah. Like he's being denied another ramekin <laughs> of ranch at TGI Fridays. <laughs> Those things happen usually within the same couple sentences in my experience. Yeah, no, that's at, fair. At yeah. Fridays. yeah, no, that's fair. Yep. <laughs> is there uh, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ask for more ranch when you order. If you want two ramekins <laughs> of ranch, just tell me at the beginning. I'll put it in the fucking system. God I'll damn give you it. 11 ramekins. Can I have as many as you want? And there's a juice layer. Cool. Yep. Called it. <laughs> I'm going to go with best worst. Inexplicable, enormous, beautiful man. That Thank they you. <laughs> it's like they knew we were going to be nodding off in the third act. And they're like, you know what we could use right now? <laughs> I don't know how this happened. I, I feel like maybe this guy just showed up and like bullied everybody on the set and be like, I'm in the movie now. And they're like, you sure are? You are? sure the you fuck are? are? <laughs> just everyone's constantly walking their fingers up his chest. So <laughs> what are you doing after the movie? <laughs> He's huge. And he has serves no purpose whatsoever. None. He just shows up at the end of this movie, has like three lines, and then disappears. I, they even tease you. They're like, what about security? And I'm like, oh, okay. Here comes Mr. Clean. And he's like, I don't know. We should probably talk to the police. And I was like, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> why? Take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst interrupting. All right, so this is the actors in this movie are just so comically bad. And several times, you know, one actor has to, 
interrupt another actor while they're speaking. And every time they do it, they do it so poorly. Like, look, I know we we do this all the time in our skits and shit. And it's kind of hard to get it right every time, especially because we've got a delay that we're working around and stuff like that. But my God, they're like interrupting so early in the sentence that it's just like, what if I was going to ask you to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to go with best worst montages. Jesus. So if I'm not mistaken, by my count, there are six. 92. <laughs> six? It was six, actually. This is okay. the real number. There are six sum up what happens in the movie montages and five. And, yeah. Yeah. Five main character is doing a thing montages in this movie. God. This movie may genuinely be more montage than not. You might, we might get there. Yeah. At one point in my notes, I was like, "Is this a musical?" And I haven't realized it. So <laughs> <long>. <laughs> but they just the guy hasn't had the courage to break into song yet, so they just keep reintroducing yeah, exactly. the music exactly. in the hopes that he'll <laughs> finally do it. A little peek behind the curtain here. So something that we do in our notes a lot of the time is if a scene is useless, we'll highlight it in our notes to say like, "Hey, I think we can skip over this and not talk about it on the actual podcast." And I did that as I was watching the movie so often that I went back and unhighlighted every because I was so like, yeah, right, "Oh, no, sorry, so I yeah. thought a movie was going to happen, but I realized now." Highlight. Yeah. <laughs> Eli, did you erase the whole notes? Did you? It's blank. <laughs> I just wrote the word bad in 28-point font. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. As bad as this was, the main point seems to be religion is a negative and Trinity Lutheran set a dangerous precedent. So we need to take a minute to sort out how we're going to tackle that. But as soon as we do, we'll be back with all the montages that are one church. And if they have children. You use the kids' bodies to distract the parents. This is not my first rodeo, oh. Heath. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm just checking. Hey, guys, what's with the Mad Max get-ups? Oh, hey, Eli. Heath and I are getting ready for Christmas shopping. It's going to be intense this year. Oh, you want to join? We can roll you at people again. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm good. I actually got all my Christmas shopping done early thanks to Raycon. What? Raycon? When you're looking for a gift everyone needs or stocking stuffer that's not a candle for once, Raycons are the way to go. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, an almost custom comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life. And as a person gifting them, you're going to love that they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Wow. And you're getting them for everyone? Yep. Raycons are sleek and stylish and come in a range of colorways to match anyone's style. I mean, Eli, that sounds great, but do you have some kind of deal? I sure do. Right now, go to buyraycon.com slash gam and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide. That's 20% off any Raycon product, which almost never happens, or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. That's code EARLYBF at buyraycon.com slash gam for 20% off your Raycon purchase. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Awesome. Thanks. So I guess you guys don't have to go all barbarian on the people at the mall anymore, right? Oh, no, no. We're, we're still going. We're still doing Yeah, that. I don't, I don't want to let that restraining order lapse. Right. Oh, the mall still has that? Oh, yeah. We killed a guy. I remember. Yeah. All right, everyone. Welcome to yet another writer's room meeting for one church. If I may, before we jump into this project, I'd like to lead us in a moment of prayer. Of course. Of course. Great. Amen. Amen. Father God, uh, please look over us in our mission to unite all in your love and to see the truth and light of your word above all others so that one day all will know the truth and glory and stand by your side in the final war against evil. Amen, brother. Amen. Lovely. Lovely. All right. So what I'm thinking, the movie is about misguided politicians who decides that they're going to unite everyone in America to be the same religion. So, so he buys up all these churches and he passes a bunch of laws so that his is the only religion, no matter what people actually believe. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. right. And then, and then our hero realizes that when people don't share those beliefs, he's persecuting them. And eventually it gets more and more extreme to the point where law enforcement itself is being used as a tool in this domineering theocracy. Um, bad. Yeah, that's, that's a no. That's we don't want that. And then at the end, he stands up and he tells his brother that you need to let people believe what they want because the church isn't a vehicle for personal vendettas and biases. I'm so sorry. You guys hear it, right? Are you? We for the hear last it? time, man. No, we don't hear it. 
We don't hear it, right? Right. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up an upscale suburbia where an actor is doing her damnedest to make this little light of mine sound scary. Yeah. yeah. It's a good song. Whatever. This is stupid. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's just this like weird smudgy demon lady walking down the street singing that mm -hmm. badly as best she can. Yeah. Right. But I think at some point in the like shot, the actress gets pissed off at having to do this this many times. So it goes from like, Creepy singing children's song to like rockin', rockin', blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. yeah, but before we get there, we we cut over to this character that will eventually be the president of the United States. I don't know that they ever give this guy a fucking name. So, but he's not the president yet. So he's in his his house. He's on the phone playing political hardball with somebody or something. Right. I just, I guess he's supposed to be a congressman at this point. You're breaking my balls. Yeah, <laughs> my balls. You're breaking them. And, and spoiler alert, he's going to be much older for the rest of the movie. So the way that they showed him younger in these scenes is a truly dollar store fake mustache. I have no <laughs> idea why they made that choice. It is criminal. It's a really bad pick. Yeah. And his the, his wife in the movie is like, honey, yeah, you're getting close to Hitler's look again. What are we saying about that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell nobody. No more thin mustaches. That's forever the law now. Yeah. Michael Jordan did it, showed that it was possible, but then he retired. So and also I should point out this movie should come with like the audio version of those epilepsy warnings. Right. The first couple of <laughs> scenes, the, the movement from left to right. It just it was batshit. Yeah. Also, if through several scenes of this movie, someone will just be like, playing the maracas on their lavalier mic it's fucking insane. yeah yeah so okay but but this guy looks out his window and he sees the chick that's singing this little light of mine and he runs downstairs turns out that she's wearing his daughter's coat and her backpack right the crazy lady is this is a really weird way to deliver the message that she's delivering that we're about to learn like why yeah. what is it she, apparently this lady is part of a cult that kidnapped Tabby. We're going to find that out in a second. So they sent her. They were like, wear her jacket and book bag and then sing really loud outside their house to deliver the message. Right. Really wanted them to be on like a weekend away. And she's just standing out there. I did under a <laughs> so They pull up. Hi, what are you doing? I've been here for two and a half days. I'm gonna <laughs> Your daughter's about to die. I'm exhausted. Do you have water? She's actually already dead now. I mean, if I to, but on Friday, she was about to die. Yeah. But anyway, so then they bring her into his house. So he grabs his. Now, this is supposed to be in the past. We we know that because they have a cell phone from like 1836 or something. Right. For this guy. Yeah. Except this is a Christian movie. So I was just like, yep. Typical Christian well, right. technology. Yeah, exactly. They were so used to their <laughs> shit being that out of just date. Cranking it like one of those Vietnam phones to call in the yeah. air. <laughs> Napalm guy. <laughs> Need a wind talker. But so she calls the the kidnapper guy and he demands fifteen million dollars in ransom. They don't have that kind of money. So Yeah. He can't have it. So she, that guy's name is Adam. She's like, I got mm -hmm. a message from Adam. <laughs> and the guy who's about to become president, he's like, Does Adam from the Bible have my daughter? <laughs> she's <laughs> like, What? No, not, what, <laughs> it, no, that makes dude, no sense at all. I'm doing a ransom thing. What the fuck are you talking it's about? It's a relatively it's, common it's a, name. Another person named Adam. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so then we head over to like bad guy, creepy church. And it's it's one of these great moments where like, you know, they're they're trying to establish, no, this is a scary culty church, but it looks identical to like people like us who don't go to a church. They're like, yeah, you're yeah. just like, yeah, this is just a church. In this scene, you could replace the he with Jesus, and they'd be like, awesome, this room needs more kids. I don't know about you guys. But... <laughs> right? Yes. Also, also, wait, can we talk about... <laughs> we have to talk about it. My favorite character in the movie, <laughs> voice changer for a voice man. So what, what's happened here is they slowed this... Apparently, this guy probably just had a kind of a a non-scary voice, of, and they were just like, oh, we need to make his voice sound scarier. So they slowed it down in post and then acted like that's just how that dude sounds. Okay, but yeah, he's part of a kidnapping we just yes. learned. So I was like, oh my god, did they accidentally keep 
the voice modulator for the kidnapping thing, like in the room and somehow his his voice is running through that and they don't realize yeah. it. So yeah, really, I, I felt like maybe like I, I, he got done with the, the call or whatever and somebody patted him on the back to say good job and he swallowed it, you know? Right, exactly. Just... Oh no, now I'm <laughs> like this forever. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like he got a compliment on a hat once and now he'll never take the hat off for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he does the next thing. We bought the voice modulator. I want to use it for other stuff. It's I sound awesome. <laughs> it's Get so off awesome. me. I'm keeping the hat. I do want to point out that it did make me a little sad, though, because this reminded me of the time Mike Lindell used a voice changer on a fart by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and so I laughed at that for a while, even yeah. though I was watching a different movie. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> I bet his real fart is squeak fart. And he was embarrassed. He was like, <laughs> no, that might be it. You've got to give it. me a manlier fart. <laughs> 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 So yeah, so so anyway, so we get that and we get creepy church, and then everybody comes up to get communion, including the kidnapped congressional daughter Tabby. <gasps> so so then we get our credits and we we open up on a, a SWAT team that's moving towards this creepy church. But but like there's a bunch of firefighters and shit just stay, like milling around and the SWAT team is still sneaking up on a all military, as though they got there and they said, well, we're doing our SWAT team walk. Okay, God damn it. I don't, I don't care if there's danger. No, we did not spend six years training as a paintball team to be mo made a mockery of today. <laughs> no. We went to Coach Dave Dobenmeyer's camp. <laughs> and they're so bad, they keep like accidentally pointing their guns at each other. Constantly. Shit. One of them, they're walking in a straight line at one point, and the guy keeps his gun up, just pointed directly at the back of the helmet of the guy in front of yes. him. Sorry, so sorry, bad. I was doing a dive roll. When you pop up, you don't, you're you disoriented for a second. I, keep, <laughs> yeah, I won't. You sorry. dive, shoot. You dive, I shoot. That's how it's going to work. You know, like trombones when they do the swingy thing in a parade? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we really yeah. have to get this right <laughs> or we shoot each other. So, yeah, but they break into the church where everyone has just like Jim Jones themselves to death with that poisoned communion. Okay, look, I know this is supposed to be a serious moment and maybe it would have been if they had gotten these actors to arrange themselves a little less comfily. <laughs> right, because every actor is like, "Well, I'm not just fucking falling on the floor. I'm gonna rest my head on Steve's tummy." And T Steve was like, "Oh, are we resting heads on tummies?" So it looks like a high school <laughs> drama club just doing a cuddle puddle. Yeah, it's just like a really relaxing, cozy daisy chain. Not fucking yeah. sleeping though, napping. Right. Yeah. Also, they really crammed everyone in this cult into a tiny room to do this big Kool-Aid toast. They must have. It's, it's just the floor is covered. Yeah, no, to a clowns in a car degree. Yeah, no, it was fucking hilarious. So we cut from there to Tabitha's funeral and we get, you know, the preacher guy going like, now I know that y'all are very upset about this little girl dying, but don't make it, let it make you angry. Let it make you my religion is the important thing. Yeah. yeah. He says religious cult thinking is unfathomable. And then next sentence, he's like, anyway, God created sin and then killed his own son to forgive <laughs> us so you you can all die and have eternal bliss whenever you die. And that's you can fine. You be washed in blood. Doesn't that sound nice? Don't do cults. Also, can we talk about his accidentally good pause? He goes, let's vow to leave this church today. And I was like, I'm loving it. And he goes, dedicated to Christ anew. Yes. And I was like, oh, <laughs> God damn it. So close. So, okay, so we cut to the funeral reception where we're going to meet. I don't know why you would introduce a character like this if you weren't going to fucking use him, but we're going to meet Cowboy Jim, the senator. <laughs> we meet so many useless cartoons in this movie. Right? So many people will be like, you remember me, don't you? I'm Jim the Hatsmith, and I have the, don't forget my metal candles that I always put to the left <laughs> and right. Here's a great example. Remember Adam, the cult leader who killed the daughter? Spoiler alert. He will never, ever come back in the nope. fucking movie. Nope. Like a jail cell of cartoon extras opened up somehow and they wandered <laughs> into the movie. And like, I'm here now a little bit, technically. Yeah, so the, the future president guy is going like, man, these damn religions and their damn religion. And Cowboy Jim is going, but man, what about the First Amendment? Freedom of religion is super duper important. Yeah. <laughs> and then... That guy, Neil, pipes up for a second, too. So they're all talking about, like, oh, my God, how does a cult like this happen? It's so sad. And Neil is like, 
oh, I don't know. Maybe we should have like a better social safety net and people won't be like victim. Shut the fuck up, Neil. They both yell at him at the same time. <laughs> Neil never comes back either. Nope. None of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, he goes, the president guy goes, you know, in America, there are over 1,500 religions. And I'm like, man, most of them are fucking Christianity, though, right? You guys just keep coming up with new damn names for the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Pentecost to the Seventh Day Advent. It's fine. We get it. Yeah, right, right. I do like how they show us some of that funeral reception thing. Like they they couldn't write anything for it, but we watch one guy walk up to like bereaved family member and being like, "So, Tabby's dead because of that cult." They're like, "Ooh, spinach dip!" And he takes yeah. a big <laughs> bite of spinach dip off a piece of baguette, walks away. There's nothing weirder than funeral receptions to me, right? Like nothing comforts me more in my moment of need than for everyone to stand around in my house eating finger sandwiches. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, yeah, super duper awkward. And you, and you have to cut over to the wife who's like, you know, I'm, I'm being sufficiently miserable, right? For everybody to look at. <laughs> yeah. At one point, one of the characters goes, how's your wife doing? And the president's like, oh, bad, because our daughter killed herself in a cult suicide. Right, yeah, Did you not was, get caught up on the drive ruin over? your fucking day, let me tell you. She's great. Pan over. She's listening to Katrina and the waves dancing around <laughs> on top of a table. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I, I was just guessing. I was just walking on sunshine for a second. <laughs> so the key here, though, is that the president has decided that, or the future president guy, the congressman, has decided that somebody needs to stand up to these damn churches and just then, his aide, this is Paul, is going to call him over to tell him how good his poll numbers are at his daughter's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Paul, timing, man, timing. Yeah, we learn it. He says, like, the polls, they really like dead cult daughters, actually. It turns out that polls, that make Christians <laughs> especially, are loving it. That's 77% of the country. Well, so there's this amazing moment here where this this movie accidentally does the thing that it's saying evil people would do, right? Because it says, Paul says to him, he says, hey, man, you know, according to the numbers, 77 percent of Americans consider themselves Christian. And then immediately after that, he says, did you hear what I said? I just said 77 percent of Americans consider themselves religious. Yeah, I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it just blew me away as though those were the same statements. <laughs> And this is also where we meet. Okay, so this is a weird one. The movie just does some bizarre shit here. We meet little Beth, right? Now, this is 18 years later. We're about to have a big time jump. And Beth and this other little boy are going to be love interests for the rest of the movie, right? They're, they're our protagonists. But the way they have to get there is basically with like this nine-year-old flirting at her sister's funeral with this boy. That's a nine-year-old funeral <laughs> meet cute. Yep. yep. Yeah. That they ran. <laughs> Interesting. Exactly. So yeah, so they they bond over a Peppa Pig doll. That's very important. It'll come back. We meet my favorite character in the movie, the dog at the funeral here. Yeah. Which was fun. Who does not want to be in this movie? No, the dog he's like, he's trying to inch out of the them. frame. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best. Some kids trying to like play with the dog. Clearly, the kid was told. Oh, you know, do the thing where you like throw a cracker and the dog gets it or whatever. So the kid, but the kid's on a dock. So the kid throws the cracker in the water. He's like, go get the cracker. And the dog's like, no, <laughs> fuck you. This is a shitty movie. Yes. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not getting wet for this dumbass movie. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's supposed to be that this is supposed to be the older brother Mason. And we're supposed to see that he's being mean to a dog so that we know he's a bad guy later. Right. Oh, okay. I had no Interesting. fucking okay, idea. That, that makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> I was just like, oh. It was so distracting. The dog just told you to fuck yourself and you kept it in the movie. <laughs> okay. Well, especially because this movie didn't start off by saying like what year we were in or anything. Like it didn't start off as like, you know, December of 1997 or whatever. Right. You know, instead it just like, yeah, we're supposed to think this is the movie. But again, the entire meet cute, this kid is just in the background fighting this dog. It's like when I overwrite Heath and me doing shenanigans in the background of an ad or a sketch. Because it's like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on, motherfucker. Oh, God, he's got my leg. Ha, 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 flamethrower, flamethrower, karate, karate, karate. You're biting me. So, all right. And then we get the dad, the future president, cleaning up after the funeral and getting angry at Jesus. For killing his dog. <laughs> right. Well, sorry. I'm sorry. First, he has to have a, 
a montage where he remembers the other scenes in the movie. That's the first one, 12 minutes in for those keeping track. <laughs> 12 minutes in. 12 minutes and in. And then he has to get angry at Jesus. Yeah. And like, let's be clear, not just like, oh, God, why? He has a very specific accusation of just because religion killed your son, you don't have to kill my daughter. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, he stands there and scream, he screams that and he screams that. And then my other daughter, her leg is all fucked up or something. She's got a brace. <laughs> we never really go into it. But still, that's bad, too. Doesn't seem to really affect her life that much or ever become relevant to the plot. But I, I don't like it. I don't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> you feckless son of a bitch. And it's stolen straight from the West Wing. It's, it's <laughs> Jed Bartlett doing his thing. And then putting the cigarette out on the floor in the middle of the church. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking more of a special set of skills kind of a ripoff. But yeah, Ooh. no, there was definitely there's definitely a little of both. I like that. Also, right as he finishes yelling at God, there's a thunderclap. So all of a sudden I was picturing we were going to get a flash cut to heaven and God being like, oh, hold me back. Fucking hold me back. <laughs> it's you to talk. <laughs> Nobody talks about my son like that. <laughs> all right. But instead, we cut to 18 years later. And I'm writing in my notes. Oh, that was the cell phones makes it. Oh, I bet that was the main character and his love interest flirting at this. Okay, now I get it. So, <laughs> so anyway, so we settle in on this firefighter. This is the kid from the funeral. This is Jake, and he's like realizing he's late for dad's big thing today, so he has to rush off to get to that. Apparently, his dad, who was the pastor at the funeral, is getting a big presidential award today. Yeah, and I don't know why, but apparently they bought like a music package for their movie because the intro music as we watch him rushing off to dad is very clearly porn music. <laughs> right? yes. like, oh no, I'm almost Absolutely. late. I'm going to make a love to you, baby. I wrote down 18 years later at a pornographic fire department. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen now? Really disappointing. So yeah, so we meet the, these guys uh, all grown up now. This is Jake and his brother Mason. They're the sons of this countrywide famous preacher, this like Billy Graham-esque preacher or whatever. And the president, the, the guy who used to be the congressman and is now president, gives this super duper wrote it on the elevator on the way up speech about him, about how great a, a beloved preacher he is. Yeah. But that's just because that's how good these writers are, not because he was supposed to have written it on the elevator. Yeah, it's also like, it's in a high school gym, so it's weird that the president is here. It's like, yes, I'm here to introduce America's preacher. Uh, sorry, that's the basketball buzzer, guys. It's going to go off every 20 to 26 minutes. We don't know how to turn it off. There's a fire drill. Fuck, okay. Also, the president needs to wrap his speech up because it's almost free period in here. So. Also, Question for you guys. Did you know who the fuck this was when nope. the president no. came up? Absolutely no fucking idea. Okay. We're supposed to, did I, do I have this correct? We're supposed to know that dad from before, the dad who lost his daughter to the cult is now president and he shaved his Hitler mustache and became 18 years younger over the last 18 years. Clearly. Yes, yeah, aged not at all. And to make it even more confusing, the preacher character, uh, the 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 father of these two of, of uh, Jake and, and Mason, has a mustache. He's an old guy with a fucking mustache. I thought that was him. Yes, yes thank I you. thought Me that too. was him. And I also all these white people are fucking identical. This they movie are. will constantly be like. Here's another white person from somewhere in the middle of the country. Remember him, don't you? It's just like my, being on a phone call with my mom, being like, you remember Debbie's cousin's <laughs> yes. son, right? <laughs> no, yeah, the one I who don't. stabbed her looking for meth. No, I don't. I, I left. This is why I left. Everybody looks like Ron DeSantis to me. I thought I yeah. saw yeah. him like 10 <laughs> times in the movie. <laughs> They really do. Yeah. And so but while he's giving a speech, he's like, you know, I'd like to take a moment to talk about my dead daughter that was killed by a cult just in case Heath and Eli are confused about who is who after <laughs> yeah. the time jump or whatever. And he says in his speech, he says, the scripture says God helps those who help themselves. And I had a whole big thing about, no, no, that's a fucking Ben Franklin quote. And he stole it from some other damn, but it's not in the fucking Bible. But apparently the movie knows that they, they mentioned that later that he's misquoting the Bible here. Yeah. Which, by the way, like, isn't a point for Christianity, right? It's not like a character goes like, you know, that's actually a weird bootstrapism that you shouldn't apply to people and their need for help. We need to help people. They're just like, huh, spell check. 
Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> also, and I have to mention this again, the audio file has to say something about this. The president guy keeps pounding his hand onto his podium. Oh my God. And every time he does, the microphone goes, click, 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 click. Yep. <laughs> and nobody told him and made him do the goddamn scene again because apparently they only had the gymnasium through free period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honey, I know you got rid of the Hitler mustache, but you're pounding on the podium and do it. you're doing the high. Mm-hmm. You want it? No, you're keeping it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So then, okay. So then we go to the fancy award reception. This is the second reception in 20 minutes of the movie. And we see the dynamic between Jake, the younger brother, and Mason, the older brother. Mason stepped into his father's footsteps and is now a nationally famous pastor, while Jake is just a lowly paramedic. Yeah, he's just been wandering from small town to small town, hoping to stumble into a Hallmark movie with no luck yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then we have to reintroduce Beth. And they they do it with the whole, like, she covers his eyes and she's like, guess who or whatever. But when they decided to do that, they didn't take into account the height disparity between these two actors. Yeah. yeah. Also, no, I uh, I don't want to throw out a correction here uh, in the middle of a record, but I don't I don't think the words she says are guess who I believe not the right words away. She says no. are oink oink piggy. Oh, you're which right. Is a which is insane. a very different emotional experience. <laughs> <than something else. laughs> yeah. If Heath covers my eyes and goes oink, oink, piggy, I'm going to assume I'm in some kind of, you know, banjo plucking situation. <laughs> sort of sexually assaulted me the one time I did that. And uh, fair, <laughs> fair, because that's insane. And the actor, Jake, is like, what? And then she comes up <laughs> from behind him and she's like, it's me. And a Peppa Pig doll. And, the- and he's like, oh, other scene because, because you had a stuffed animal pig. Uh, 18 years ago yes, topical yes. got it cool <laughs> no I know that scene was just now but that's in a movie yeah we, that it's 18 <laughs> real years in our lives oh and we have to point out that both of these actors are shockingly wooden right like they like they just both came from pretty intense dental procedures they are so oh. fucking bad <laughs> my god it, it is like community <laughs> improv class that you just like quietly walk out of the back of as yep. quickly as possible levels of bad okay post pretty intense <laughs> dental procedure is such a good description of every movie we ever watch <laughs> yeah no, that is, every act that's true <laughs> maybe that's an award we give out at the end of the yeah, yeah there, there you there go you. there you go the, the most intense dental procedure so and then they they leave together, right? They're like, oh, I guess we're the love interest, right? We should go somewhere. But they have to sneak away from the Secret Service like it's a fucking Assassin's Creed mission or something. <laughs> Luckily for them, all the Secret Service are Metal Gear Solid guards from the early games because they're You're just right, yeah. behind yeah. them. And the guards are like, I don't hear nothing. Yep. <laughs> they might as well push a guard over and then like do a jump stomp on his back and he shatters into pieces. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so it's it's the next day we get Beth walking into her mom's office, the the Flotus's office, and putting on her leg brace. Remember, she had a leg brace from before. Trust us, this will eventually matter. Honey, I've told you that doesn't make any fucking sense in the movie and never will. (laughs) Stop putting it on. And this is where I noticed that she had sort of a like poor man's Reese Witherspoon look. To her, so I have her as Reese Witherspork for the rest of the movie. Nice, (laughs) yes. And and she says to her sister, she says to her mom, she's like, oh, I'm so sick of all the security. And I wrote in my notes, dude, your sister literally got kidnapped and murdered. Maybe you turn on location services on your phone. There you go. You're the president's daughter. Yes, you live in the fucking White House. (laughs) Are you just now noticing the Secret Service? Because we've been here for a while. They're everywhere. I mean, they're pretty slow and they just walk in like straight lines and then turn around. And if something's behind them, they don't notice. But they're everywhere. Yeah, right. So (laughs) they have a very limited cone of vision. It's like how Melania Tripe kept trying to replace things in the White House. People kept having to explain to her that she didn't get to redecorate the White House. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) She would try to take down like famous paintings and they'd be like, ah, 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 ah. No touch. (laughs) No touch. You're only here for four years. You putting tape on the wall? What do you do? Get out of here. So, yeah, so they talk about her dad. She's like, you know, why was he so religious in that speech yesterday? And they talk about Jake. This is the opposite of the Bechdel test. They talk about nothing except men. Yeah. In their conversation. <laughs> the Bechdel vacuum. Yeah, exactly. 
But Beth is like, hey, how sure are we that dad isn't the antichrist? And and the mom's like, hmm, that's, I, I, don't, I guess, 50, 50? Honey, does he have a European accent? <laughs> no, relax. <laughs> and I love, it's so waspy. She's like, well, why don't you have a chat with your dad about his quest to kill God? Maybe it's something you could do together, huh? Yeah. That's <laughs> fun. <laughs> do a little fishing, kill Yahweh. <laughs> so, so, okay, so then we get, Jake pull it up at his dad's church. I guess everybody, the, the president's coming to visit his church that day. So everybody's like a buzz with all the excitement and everything. Right. And I, I just want to say, I love this scene so much because to anyone but us, this scene is inscrutable yes. nonsense. Well, us and Christians. Yeah. Right, exactly, because we know that things like, why is there a secretary greeting people at the door of a church is bad because it's supposed to be peach pie and a little old lady who's <laughs> yes, been there exactly. since before the coloreds could vote, right? Oh, but if you don't have the extensive experience with, say, 379 Christian films, he's just walking around and she's like, yeah, can I get you anything? And he's like, no, you can't. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they're changing the name of the ministry at that moment, too. And we're supposed to be like, mm, that's never a good sign. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they're changing the name ominously. Yes. And <laughs> the name is now RMI something, right? Russell yeah, it doesn't Mason even have Jesus in it. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And the word international is supposed to be scary and evil to us. Yes. Again, if you aren't us after 370 fucking nine of these, or I guess a Christian person, it's like, yeah, there's maybe there's a church that has you know, more than one country that it, that it has places. No, nope. That's bad. That's bad. According to this movie. Yeah. So, he, but he's there to see his brother. And uh, while he's waiting, he, he walks into his dad's office where there's conveniently a scrapbook filled with, you know, exposition that we already know. It's yeah. <laughs> I can't even get this shit right. Were they expositing to their own character and letting us yeah. watch that? So we already <laughs> would know this already too. Turns a page, takes out a DVD of this movie, pops it in, yeah. just zooms it on the screen, <laughs> yeah. starts over again. Okay, really quick. Can we talk about the board game that is on the desk? What? In the background of this scene. Do you mean Bible Baffle? Did you buy it? I purchased one yes. Bible Baffle. <laughs> I want to play the board game Bible Baffle so bad. Oh, New York Platinum Night. Get ready for some Bible Baffle. Fuck yeah. I know we said we were going to do other stuff. It's the game that transcends trivia. It says that on the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed it. How did I miss that? Transcendental triviality. <laughs> yes. I'm actually very impressed by the language this board game uses in its description because it's not allowed to say like you know less about your religion right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's what if the stakes of a board game were eternal damnation? So it's like the Bible <laughs> baffle game is a fun way for families to test their knowledge of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I don't know if that's transcendent. That what it you described sound felt, we'll, we'll that sounds figure like it out. We'll figure. exactly trivia. Yeah, exactly. It, it certainly customer, sounds trivial. I'm so sorry. I know we need to do our podcast, but the customer question for this board game, it only has one and it's who killed the ball? <laughs> who killed the what? The ball. What? It's one of the guys that gets killed in Samuel and someone obviously couldn't figure it out in the game. <laughs> so they went on to the Amazon, Amazon customer questions for Bible Baffle. Again, when did we the, crusade the moops? Yeah. It, it literally is who killed the ball. It all cracked. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Still a couple of tickets for... No, there aren't. Never mind. Nope. There are no tickets nope. for Platinum Night. There are no tickets at all. They'll tell you about it. There are no tickets anywhere. Nope. So yeah, so so then finally though, he, we we get wrap up with a little exposition and he goes to meet with his brother in the conference room. And oh, and we have to establish that his brother, Randy, is is a bad pastor. So his introductory like N media rest line is <laughs> all right, let's <laughs> let's ramp up these foreclosures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exact words. <laughs> right as Jake walks in. That's what he says. Yeah, and then the, the orphans will work themselves out. Yes, that's hey, exactly Jake. what I was gonna say. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you what you you were saying it? We were just gonna practice our music number. We're Marley and Marley. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but he, this is where Randy introduces him to his team of like, you know, cutthroat 
church runners or whatever. <laughs> so. And Jake, like, <laughs> Jake's too busy being offended by the stuff that Christians get offended by that he misses a few. Right. Like he's like oh, buying up churches. Harumph. Fancy chairs. And it's like, no, dude, I, I think everyone's <laughs> on board with the um with a nicer chair. What is this? Lemon water? Fuck you. Yeah, right. Snaps it out of their hand. Fancy bullshit. This is also where we met meet my hero of the movie, Tanya. So <laughs> Yes. Tanya will only have two scenes and she will steal the goddamn shit out of those scenes. Cause Jake is like, Randy, this is not the way that it's done. You know, we 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 should be like, you know, a small church that loves Jesus and does little pet funerals, whatever. And Tanya stands up and she is not ready to take any shit from this motherfucker. At not all. at all. Well, Jake. My media empire that I'm building for you will fuck you in every orifice of your gut. And everybody's like, hey, Tanya, hey, Tanya, love, Tanya. love where you're at. Like your heart's in it. Love that. You heard how you got insanely aggressive right away, yes. though. <laughs> Tanya, you do you that? remember when you pried open Jay's mouth and spit into it? <laughs> and what did we say about we just there's never a reason to pry open anyone's mouth in the workplace, right? We had a whole workshop. Those <laughs> teens came in, did a bunch of improv <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were Unitarian Universalists who spit in people's mouths. I, I thought this is America. <laughs> Fuck you. She's the best. So, yeah. And so th this is where Randy explains to Jake, he's like, you know, this is such a big deal for us. The president is going to create a Department of Religious Freedom. And I wrote in my notes another one because we've had one of those since 1998. And I agree. Yes. It's a terrible fucking idea. <laughs> Thank you. This is th they're trying to make this as like a fantasy in a movie. So, no, this is not a fantasy. We have that thing since 1998. And we have the Supreme Court doing it now, too. Yeah. Yeah, really. Jesus Christ. And he's like, but, but Jake... Clinton. <laughs> and he's like, but Jake, we're we're gonna unify religion in America. That's the the bad guy's master plan. And Jake goes, one religion? Haven't you ever seen an apocalypse movie? <laughs> Come yeah, on, right. man. Or 4D. Also, I, I love that Jake's accidental jump in volume there. Mm -hmm. There's this fantastic moment. He's like, blah, 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 blah. and then he's just for no reason, he's just like, I'm gonna back up. What about the message? I just wrote in my notes. Did you put your name in the goblet of fire? What the fuck is happening? Here? There's also this, just to give you an idea how bad the writing is in this fucking movie. This is a line that Jake yells in a fit of anger while stabbing his finger into Randall's chest at the end of this fucking scene. He goes, yeah. you're using words like unity and diversity to complicate an uncomplicated <laughs> message. That's an exact quote. Yes. <laughs> Stupid. I <laughs> drive a Dodge Stratus. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a lot like that. And then Randy, who's doing great. Randy's crushing it. His her church is going big. They have like the media mm -hmm, people in. Mm -hmm. It's nice. They have lemon water. It's a really nice it's office. They have Herman Miller, Aaron chairs. Yep. It's Tanya. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. But he's like, oh, oh, my brother got mad at me about my fascist Unitarianism. I'm going to stew about this in my... <laughs> evil green shirt that they made me wear from men's warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> you got four for the price of one. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. That scene obviously got everybody's blood pressure up. So for the sake of our audience's safety, I think we need to take a break. Let everybody calm down. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of One Church. Hey, podcast listener. As you know, our very own Eli Bosnick is not great with money. What happened to all my F tickets? Whether it's his purchase of Bitcoin in November of 2021 or his advice to sell Tesla stock right before it doubled or just his personal finances, he doesn't make a lot of great choices. I understand. What do you mean that's not what an FTX is? But one smart thing that he does that you can do as well is manage his money with Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. This app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for. You might even find out that you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Not to mention it's got budgeting tools, financial snapshots, and more. What do you mean it's gone? How can it be gone? I have so much of it. It can't be gone. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies movies. Hey, guy, um, can I borrow um, whatever it's going to cost for to go to college? No. No, you cannot. Okay, I'll trade you guys for Fox tickets. Not what that stands for, man. I know. 
now. <laughs> you listen here, God. You took my daughter, but I'm going to see that you and your followers can never harm anyone ever again. I'm going to start a church dedicated to truth and kindness and social justice, and you're not going to hey, harm... Hey, hey, man. An- Dude. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I didn't see you there. Or Were you two with the caterers? Yeah. Yeah, we were just... Um, n- we were not smoking a pot out of an apple right here. Seriously, Heath. You, you say something then. Somebody had to say something. So anyway, anyway, so we couldn't help but overhear your little monologue. And the thing that you're looking for is atheism. Yeah, atheism. Mm, atheism? No, no, no. You don't, gents don't understand. My daughter was sucked into a cult. No, no, no. I, we we <laughs> heard the whole whole thing. It's just the answer is not more religion. That's the opposite of the answer. Yeah. More uh-huh. oh, okay. Well, this atheism would it would it put a stop to religious extremists? Yeah. Uh, and you could use it to focus communities on unity. Also, that yes. And and we could pass laws that stop the same religious extremists from hurting people. Yeah, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, well, how's that better than my thing? Um, it's it's all that stuff. Plus, you can put whatever you want in a consenting adult's butt. Well, damn, sold. Nice. Nice. You uh, you want some drugs? So they make putting stuff up your butt easier? Sure. Then no. <laughs> All right. Bootstraps, man. I like that. Damn right. Butt straps. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to rejoin the action with Jake showing up at his dad's house. And this is where we're going to introduce the character of dad's Mexican friend, Paolo. You. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. I almost went with best worst magical black friend. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, no kidding. So, but he's he's going up to his dad's house and Paolo is sitting on the porch and he's like, oh, Jake, we haven't met. Would you like to expose it with me a little bit before you go in? And he's like, I would like to expose it with you. <laughs> okay. Are you magical? <laughs> the first thing they talk about is how much the dog hates Jake. And like Paolo doesn't drop it for a second. He's like, oh, the dog doesn't like you. And he's like, yeah, I guess not. And he's like, no, seriously, like I, he's usually pretty friendly to most people. But you, he hates you. <laughs> he wishes you were <laughs> totally dead does. and like a painful death, Jake. And he's like, OK, well, anyways. And again, so very important. This is not relevant to the film. Nope. Ever, ever, ever. No, this is the actor of, of Paulo being like, fuck this guy. Whatever. I'm, I'm going to make it very clear that dogs <laughs> hate him at some point. They're going to have to keep it. But as Jake's going in, he's like, oh, by the way, you know, the president said something about, you know, God helps those who help themselves being in the Bible. I read the entire Bible last night, cover to cover. And didn't find that anywhere. So I guess that's not in the Bible. I'm like, okay, so they know that that's not in the Bible, but they don't know how reading works. <laughs> really? You read cover to cover. You read the list of begats last night to check <laughs> if that <laughs> sentence was in it. You didn't skip it all. Did the wisdom books and everything. Yeah. Okay. Boring. So, <laughs> <laughs> but eventually Jake goes in to see his dad. This is the first of the many terrible interruptions in the film. Right, he's supposed to be asking Dan. Dad's supposed to launch into this monologue, but he does it as though he's just gotten sick and fucking tired of waiting for this actor to get around to his line. <laughs> well, what's amazing is what's very clear is someone's dad was like, I ain't going to be in your movie. I ain't no homosexual like Tom Cruise. And they were like, come on, you're going to be playing this like world famous pastor. And he was like, OK. And then in their quiet voice underneath, they were like, who's become really old and needs to be fed applesauce. And he was like, what? And they were like, don't worry about it. We'll see the day we shoot. <laughs> you want some applesauce in real life? He's so mad to be there. He's he's what I dream for for every boomer is just being fed applesauce, angrily ranting about your relationship with God. <laughs> your wish is coming true a lot, buddy. I know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Boats canceled out by Gen Z. That was COVID. Gorgeous. COVID. <laughs> So and the dad gives this monologue and I had a lot of trouble figuring out what the fuck it was about. Right. It's It seems to me that he's saying, you know, if you disagree with me religiously, you should die painfully. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm just a simple pastor. This newfangled diversity is obviously a problem that I will fix. <laughs> that, that's serious. That's this little monologue and the movie. That's the yep. point of the whole thing. Look, if you want to put your own creative spin 
on my exact religious message, we have no issues. But if you deviate by even a micro letter, you will burn in the fires of hell forever. More applesauce, please. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, don't do the creative spin. I'll also kill you for that. Yeah. yeah don't right, do the yeah, creative honestly, spin. Don't, yeah. don't make the creative spin like a smur smur, if you know what I'm saying. You know? So, <laughs> like Black Smur. Paolo. <laughs> Paolo. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason he's not allowed in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And then, okay, so then we cut to the president. He's on his way to the church, and Beth has decided to tag along this time so that they can have the dad you seem to be doing a lot of antichrist stuff recently conversation right <laughs> yeah and dad's like oh no no i'm not religious i'm just using religion to unite everybody and that's <laughs> like god dad religion only hurt one person that one time right you need to get over it you okay need to dad let go this tab of the based vendetta against god damn it there's also this great moment where she again jumps in too early on the interruption He's just like, it. literally, he goes, I just, duh. And she goes, don't want to what? <laughs> so you got to let him get the all the words out. Okay. So then we, we, we head back over to the pastor dad's place where we learn that he's got a nonspecific fatal illness and it's getting worse. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. He's got the m MacGuffinoma, like usual yeah. in all these movies. <laughs> yeah. It's weird that God's turning you into a vegetable, huh, dad? Right? Like you and him were such good friends for so long, and now he's just slowly draining the life out of you while you're aware of it. Like, like if Heath was turning me into a vegetable, I wouldn't say that we were friends. So, you know, that's just me. Applesauce? There's this great one. So, and then this movie becomes a montage, but just sort of a general, like, generic doing stuff montage right? like okay yeah <laughs> this, this is a montage of stuff we forgot to exposit so far. yes all right so they do a montage and then you can see the writer's room be like oh, does that count as a full montage we'll add palliative care there we go yeah, Perfect. <laughs> right, yeah. now exactly. it's a montage no, we'll have the brother he'll foreclose on a church and uh, while we're there and then Boom. And and then they're like, did we really get all the exposition in there? And he's like, you know what? We could just have exposition radio cut in in the middle of the montage and talk over the song. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a, this is what's happening in the montage. Also, seriously, like I, we joked about the applesauce, but this is the scene where they feed this older actor the applesauce and he's so mad. He's so <laughs> totally fucking mad is. about being fed the apple. Like the I dog his son was trying gonna... not to eat the pill and you have to like yep. hold his yeah. mouth closed around him. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so but that that montage ends with dad's death, right? And we cut to like there's the you know where we skip the funeral, we go straight to post funeral, which means that we've now had three reception scenes in the first forty minutes of this film. Okay, the whole movie to me at this point is just people dying and then funerals, and I was very amused. I was like, this is great if they could just keep killing people, funeral, killing people, funeral, applesauce, love it. We're gonna keep, we're gonna end the second act on another one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they're not done. At a certain point, like you're like, were they? Did they get some kind of punch card for renting it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, funeral homes open again. If you guys want to use it for your movie, not, not a lot of not a lot of business. You know, mostly <laughs> mostly just Sundays. Can I get a foot long too? That's when people die. So yeah, so we're at the dad's house and uh, everybody's showing up for the for the funeral reception and the the president's there. In this comically oversized limo. I feel like you would have just used a normal sized limo for that event, but no. Yeah, the stretch isn't super classy when it comes to a funeral. No, not really. Beth gets out. She starts talking to Jake and delivering her line like a 12-year-old asking his crush to dance. <laughs> okay, she's flirting at his dad's <laughs> funeral, to be yes. clear. So like, or she's like, hey, so yeah, dad, dad's funeral, that's... That's rough. Do you uh, do you like brunch or like what's your favorite <laughs> we just, of the meal? We just keep running into each other at funerals, and <laughs> I never get to tell you how good you look in black. Oh, this is more <laughs> awkward than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, your yeah. dad died. <laughs> I can I can get my pink doll again. Does that help? <laughs> huh? So you want me to call you a pig, but in a different way now? <laughs> wink, wink. Because we're older. <laughs> So, yeah, he tells her, he's like, you know, I've just got to get away. And she's like, no, I understand. The writers aren't good enough to think of any specific reason for people to do things. So that is just you're just going to say your motivation out loud. He's like, exactly. 
that. Yeah. And then there's this great moment where we cut over to Tanya and and the and the team going over all of the funeral montage from the day with no sense of proper reverence at all. Yeah. They are being real Jewish about their control of the media. Let me tell you. I wanted so bad for like Chaim Goldberg to walk in. This is going great, fellas. Yeah, right, right. I'm the president. Okay, you're making jokes about the racism here, but they're like, at one point, they actually, they're looking at the footage of this and Tanya's like, oh, okay, right there. The, uh, the, 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 the Mex Native American. We're going to cut the not white guy, right? <laughs> That's bad for the, the brand. Yeah, they said they're going to cut him because he was talking about helping the poor and stuff. And that'll just depress people, not because of the color of his skin. And then and, the, and one of the producer guy goes, man, one church, one message. So like even the movie's name drop is delivered like a waiter passing on a special request to a fry cook in the weeds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure would be bad if somebody used religious emotion and racism to sway elections. Right? That's a really good point the movie's making and didn't hear themselves say. So, okay. So then we cut to Beth and Paolo having tea. And I just, I have to point this out because it's a fucking amazing moment. She says, thank you. He says, Donata. The subtitles say, thank you. And then in brackets, speaking foreign language. Fuck yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. And hey, hey, Noah, will the subtitles of this movie ever translate Spanish, one of the most commonly spoken languages in the world? They will never correctly identify which language is being spoken. Nope. In the anti-diversity movie, I guess that's the right move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I got some bad news. Bad news is there is some Spanish in the baby. The good news is it's literally about fuck everyone who isn't white. So, yep. you know, go crazy. So, so, but they're having this, they're having this classic, like, two people talking past each other conversation where Paula's like, yeah, the village I come from is really, really poor. And she's like, anyway, am I, it's so hard for me to get coffee these days with all the secret <laughs> service. So difficult. Uh, maybe you let me go first next time, Paula, where I talk about what's going on with me. Not a lot of people just listen to me, be a listener, you know, ask questions. <laughs> really quick, can we just note that her Starbucks order is Eli's Starbucks order, I'm pretty yep, sure. sure I, is. It was a little upsetting, yeah. Sure I is. I love that. Right down to the temperature of the water, yeah. And she's like, you know, I just, I just wish things made more sense or, or some dumb shit, you know, like the, the one of the questions that Christians dream of being asked, right? And then Paulo like loses his goddamn mind and starts singing to her off key. <laughs> I have no idea. So ultimately, he's trying to point out that like, oh, you know, I could give you platitudes and stuff, but why don't I, you know, you should seek answers for yourself. That's the point he's making because like they have nothing to actually say. Right. And to be clear, he wants her to seek answers in his book of perfect God wisdom, right? He doesn't want Yes, to, right, right. Uh -huh. he, he says everything's an opinion. And I wrote my notes, except for my book, which has had several dozen revisions that we admit to. Yeah. <laughs> There are no simple answers. Anyway, this book is magical, unrelated to the last thing. It turns out, <laughs> but in a complex way. That's the point of his speech here. Yeah, right. All of morality and the point of existence is in this book that you can get in any hotel room. But anyways, yeah, don't go for the easy ones. Yeah, right. No, it, well, it, and then, of course, that with an undercurrent of the problem is you keep expecting religion to make sense, even though it's religion. Yeah. So, OK, so then we cut to the president playing pool with his evil aide. Right. So that this guy could write off his uh, pool table purchase. <laughs> and again, yeah. I, I they expected me to know who this aide was. He was like, yes, me. I'm in the movie. I was like, Jesus. Christ. This is like when Marvel tries to tie in shit from the TV shows I didn't watch into <laughs> one of the main movies. <laughs> I'm an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. You're fucking nobody. Get off the screen. <laughs> no, this is one of those 10 Ron DeSantis's for yes, sure. <laughs> two of them. Yeah, right. This yeah. is the president and Paul, the the aide from before. And they're like, they're, they're talking about, I guess they're talking about their evil religion plans, right? About how they're going to close down all the churches that don't agree to join their one unified church. Okay. This, this is another one of those moments where the movie's trying to make a point as the evil character, but the point is just so obviously good. So an actor has to do an evil voice and be like, religion causes murder and we're going to fix that. I'm an evil henchman. And then the other guy has to be like, that's right. We will end hate crimes 
I'm an antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. We're going to end hate crimes once and for all. Finger steeple. Sorry, the, the tone is crazy. Everything <laughs> you wrote, I don't, doesn't line up. Also, can we talk about their pooling, their billiardsing? Oh, yes, please, please. Really quick. At one point, do they do one, one pool shot. Why have the pool shot if this is what you're going to do? One guy goes six in the side and hits it in the corner pocket. Very he clearly. Shoots for the corner pocket. We, <laughs> so like, very clearly. Do, do they think, does the movie think that side is all the pockets because they're on the side of the <laughs> table? On the side of the pool table, of course, yeah. <laughs> so this writer is going through his whole life playing pool and just being like in the side, in the side, it's in always, the side every single time. It's always on a side if you think about it. <laughs> so, uh, in the space dimension, four. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we get Jake pulling up at Paolo's place ready to, to go to Mexico with him, right? He's going to go to Mexico and find himself or something or find the end of the second act, I guess. Yeah. Beth is there. She gives him a gift that he's not allowed to open until he gets to Mexico. <laughs> I would really like so to talk stupid. about that gift when he opens it. Cause oh, yeah. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> so, and then we cut to the president's big press conference where he's going to unify all religions. Now, He's standing at this at, at this podium and he's got this just comical string of different religious leaders with different silly hats lined up behind him. <laughs> oh my him. god. The guy who was forced to be the rabbi is so <laughs> mad. <laughs> Stupid Jewish yarmulke. <laughs> yeah. What if I have a heart attack? He's right angry. Now? There's an Aztec shaman eating the heart of a child. Just like yeah. no equality. This is good equality. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> this rabbi's pretty mad though. Maybe not the drummer. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. So the, the the president's given this speech about how all the great things that they've done with religion. There's one point where he says we've provided gender equality and marriage, and we're all supposed to boo and hiss or whatever. Boo, like gender equality. Rah, 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 Again, rah, I had to say that in an evil tone. I don't understand. I, think <laughs> I you made me say diversity, equality, unity is bad. Good. I don't understand. What tone should I be using? Also, while he's making this speech, it pans out and we see actually the guy who is even madder than his than the rabbi guy, which is incomplete turban guy. Yeah. He has like half a turban on his head and he's like, it's not even didn't even give right. it enough. Everyone said they would know how to do it. I <laughs> watched a YouTube tutorial for like 26 minutes. This is the closest I could do. <laughs> it's, he's got a full Windsor going. I don't think this is right. <laughs> So and and while the president is giving this speech, and I love this so goddamn much, we start cutting out to this airport bar where everybody's just nodding along and agreeing with him and throwing out random lines of agreement. <laughs> right. And they're extras in this movie, which means members of this church. So they're all like, I like it when there's all one religion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? That's good for me, too. One girl says, and I quote, our church got its driveway paved by the government. <laughs> <laughs> What? This is supposed to be stupid people being like diversity, equality is good, duh, and they're they're <laughs> yes. bad according to the movie, <laughs> right? And Jake is watching him at the hotel bar, like you ignorant, ignorant yeah. fools. <laughs> <Exactly. Yes. laughs> yeah, right. We cut to Paolo and and Jake sitting there at the bar waiting, and then they call them for their their flight, like they do at airports, right? And that's when you go to the thing. But Jake tells Paulo, he's like, yeah, you know, he's getting a lot of great press, but my dad would never have signed off on all this fulfilling of antichrist prophecy stuff that he's doing. <laughs> yeah, very ominous. And then we we go to Mexico. We we can tell because of the music that we're now in in Mexico. And of course, that's going to open up with a quick oppressive poverty montage. Yeah. In case you weren't clear that it was Mexico, we also see kids playing um Put the dirt in the rusty can, the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, Because yes. that's what Mexico is. And they're very smutty. No no one in Mexico has discovered uh, wiping your face yet. So. No, uh, no, no. Mexico is made of dust. <laughs> Here's my question. Okay. Because these people are all probably Latin American, right? Or something like that, right? There, there was one white guy because they needed a guitarist, right? But they're, these people all appear to be from Mexico, right? When the director is like, hey, everybody, now we're going to do the scene in Mexico. I'm going to need you to smudge it up and play with maracas. <laughs> Why is the answer to that not no? Because they need a few bucks, <sighs> man. It's, you know, because uh, they pay them. They pay them. They say like, hey, act Mexican and give them money. And they're like, no, smudgier, you know. <laughs> 
but yeah, so we come here and, and of course we have to have this, like, I guess this is an attempt at humor. Like Paulo starts introducing Jake around and he bows because he doesn't know how Mexico works. But that's right. Like it, as though he was in Japan. Idiotic. That's obviously China. <laughs> right. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> really? Right. And yeah, I mean, look, everyone's sad and smudgy and they all live in this barn that their neighbor said they could use. But hey, at least they aren't worshiping the wrong version of Jesus. Am I right? Yeah. I'm right. like those assholes in the airport. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So so we see him like the next day, I guess he's at uh, there at Paulo's church service. There's this great moment where everybody's singing in Spanish and he obviously doesn't know the language. And I'm like, please <laughs> tell me he's trying to sing along, Just- but he's not. Oh, I wanted so badly for it to be Jake doing like made up phonemes that seemed to him to be Spanish <laughs> yeah, to right. go with it. Because you see his mouth doing it for sure. Mm-hmm. We also get a montage, another one here, of Jake using a cot, the montage. Yep. Well, wait, wait, wait. It's so weird because we get shots of the children being sad and smudgy and dirty. And then he takes the blanket off the bed and throws it away. So... If I'm not mistaken, the message of that montage is I'm not sleeping on these fucking blankets. What am I, an Aztec? I know how this works. I don't, uh-uh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and <up with> small blocks. <laughs> so, so Paolo and Jake leave the church. It's time for a goddamn friendship montage of the two of them walking all day and night. <laughs> they go on a romantic burrito picnic. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I just want to say, I tried to get Heath to do this with me. He said no. It's very yeah, exciting. you know. I wanted to pick the burritos. I'm not I'm not negotiating this on air. <laughs> I'm tired of having this fight in private. Okay, but that's seriously what they do. It was like, all right, it's time to do Christian in Mexico together. And apparently we start with Christian walking. We watch them walk for a good deal of time. And then we watch Jake be like, hey, hey, hello, um, what the fuck are we doing? Is this, Are you doing like a Mr. Miyagi thing? Or And we're going to find out that, yes, he actually is doing a Mr. Miyagi thing. Yes. But first, a sex thing, I'm pretty sure. Thank you. Right? Okay. Because they show up at this like remote area in the forest. And Paolo's like, all right, welcome to my remote fuck shack. <laughs> Christian lesson play. What he, here's what he literally says. He literally says, I need to turn the lamps on. So that when Jake walks in, it is a candlelit room for the two of them. <laughs> yes. Yep. I wrote in my notes. Now they're just going to feed each other chocolate covered strawberries like bros do. <laughs> <laughs> or burritos. Either way, it can be sexy, even if they're too big and squishy out, you know? Yeah. So, okay. So, but apparently what we're supposed to learn here is that, that Paolo's place is so poor, it doesn't even have electricity. And that's how Jake's going to live simple and back to the land or whatever. This is also like, so Paulo leaves and this is where he can finally open that present that he got from Beth. It's a Bible. <laughs> but not just any Bible. That's right. <laughs> it's a Bible in a language he doesn't speak. Yep. We watch him be like, oh, Spanish? Fucking, gr- I, I shouldn't have to press one for English. I'm in, oh, it's well, America. No, I'm in, I, I am in Mexico. <laughs> I went here on purpose without knowing any Spanish. This is so weird. badly thought out. So yep, I might have to. Dumb. Fuck Paolo out here in a remote fuck shack. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, all right. So, so the next morning, Paolo and Jake are having breakfast, and he's like, "Hey, so in that last scene, what was what was the present?" And he's like, "Stupid Spanish Bible. I don't even speak Spanish." And he's like, "Oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to take care of that, aren't we?" And it's time for him to Mister Miyagi him into learning Spanish. <laughs> this is so dumb. By translating the Bible, yeah. So uh, they they start to whine. He's like, he's like, you're gonna need to learn to speak the language. I'm like, oh, please tell me this is a learning Spanish montage, and it is. Yep. But it's a him learning it because he just hands him the Bible and a bunch of paper and says, translate this from Spanish to English, and you'll know how to speak Spanish. What? That's great. <laughs> what? When I start writing, will it just be in English? Why would that teach me? <laughs> how would that work? Yes. Well, that's insane. But we see him do that. Just start writing like pages and. Pages. He, like he's he's just guessing. thousand plus pages, right? He's supposed to be writing out the entire Bible. Also, hey, you know where that's not going to be helpful? Modern day Mexico, right? I really wanted the next scene for him to be like, I mean, look, unless you guys want to tell me who you're planning to stone to death and for how many goats, right? I really can't tell you any of this penicillin shit that is oh. pretty important. You find out. I would. So we see this like he's growing a beard. The montage lasts so long. I wanted Paolo to come in and he's just written all work and no play makes Jake a dull boy or something over and over. <laughs> 
Can we talk about the beard? <laughs> it's pretty awful. Look, this actor who plays Jake, he's a good looking dude, right? But whether or not you're good looking or not, sometimes God just decides no beard on your cheeks. And that is what they have decided <laughs> for Jake. He looks he looks like it, the 127 hours guy hadn't bothered sawing his arms off and it just <laughs> stuck there. I like it under this rock. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like an insurrectionist on a castaway island where yeah. there's nobody and no government. <laughs> Should be crying in a cage at CPEC. <laughs> and of course, midway through the montage or so, he speaks Spanish now. We see him speaking Spanish. We don't hear it. <laughs> so we just see it without sound. <laughs> <laughs> of him speaking Spanish to people, telling them about the Bible. There's this, this great moment because he's like helping people as well. But the helping people scenes are so ridiculous. Right. The first one, he's, he's trying to like he's supposed to be like dabbing at this kid's cut. But the guy that did the cut went a little overboard. <laughs> oh, it's a Halloween adventure cut. It's a giant open wound. Yes. And he's just dabbing at it. And the kid's holding it out like he's going to kiss on it and he's going to run out and start playing again. Yeah. Right. Just going to rub some dust in it. There's plenty of that. <laughs> so also, I just have to talk about this. The entire time he's doing this helping people montage, he has a toy panda crucified to the wall of his office. Oh, interesting. What? I missed that. Literally crucified behind him. And no one ever acknowledges that? it. They very clearly were like, oh, it's, it's shitty in this barn. We, he would be like helping kids. So let's nail this panda to the wall. <laughs> That'll make it nice and homey. Fuck. Yeah, but so we get the the montage. He cleans up the kids' wounds. He There's this great scene where he like pushes a midwife out of the way and delivers a baby. <laughs> yeah. So funny. We also get some really bad soccering. Yeah. He's not. He, he, he translated the Bible. So now he knows how to play soccer. Because of the Spanish part of that. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say he knows how to play soccer. I know he, he aims to kick a ball and yeah. several five-year-olds steal it out from under him. Soccer ball, side pocket. There we go. Is that the, the goal? <laughs> <laughs> we call that a side pocket, right? And okay. So, but at the end of this montage, Paolo shows up with Beth. Now, apparently Beth has been his pen pal this whole time. That was part of the montage as well. They were writing letters back and forth. And now she's come to see him in Paolo's little village. Right. And she's got some bad news and it's they do that like, you know, he doesn't know she has bad news. So he's just happy to see her. And she's got that dour look on her face. But because this is so poorly written and acted, it goes on for way too long. Right. Yeah. Also, to be clear, the president's daughter is allowed to come to Mexico without secret service to a poor village in the middle of nowhere because her friend's mom died. And that's the only way to tell him. Yeah, clearly they write letters back and forth, but this is the only way she could think to communicate this information to him. Yeah, right. And Paolo picks you up in a, a van and then does an off-road commercial for the van. So it's covered in mud and dust <laughs> and then shows up. Everything in Mexico is covered in mud and dust. It's like this giant double-decker van for Beth and Paolo and that's it. Right. But And, and clearly she's communicated somehow to Paolo to come pick her up from the airport. So he could she could have said, oh, and also tell Jake her, his mom died. Yeah. Right. And then get him and put him on a plane <laughs> yeah. to here right. where we both need to end up. I'm the president's daughter. Oh, and then there's this uh, terrible. So she tells him, you know, oh, your mom's died. And both of these actors have to try to be sad now. And yet I'm the only one that sheds a genuine <laughs> tear. <laughs> Holy was, shit. Oh, no, don't don't do it while I'm doing it. it makes me <laughs> just sad. Oh, oh, my fucking God. Oh, wow. This turns into a being sad about mom montage. Yep. Being shared by, and he's doing some of the Mexican stuff. So he's like, he's like discontently patting at the giant open wounds yeah. now. Like, yeah. Shared about my mom. <laughs> then another Mexican child starves to death, but my mom. <laughs> by the way, for those keeping track, this is movie montage number three so far in the film. So we've had one every 20 minutes yeah, so right, far in this movie. Right, because he's remembering the three scenes of the movie that his mom was in in the middle of this as well. Yeah. So uh, he also, he shaves his beard in this montage without <laughs> using water. Okay. He's, he's got a giant castaway beard at this point. Mm -hmm. And then we watch him go into a bathroom, look in the mirror and just smush 
shaving cream all over this giant beard. Like, like his forehead and his, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not not like scissors first and then a buzzer and then you nope. would shave like a human being. No. Nope. He just <laughs> he smushes shaving cream everywhere. I was dying to see how this would go with, okay, and now, yeah, go right, go to town with a razor blade right now. I would love to watch this. I just wanted him to come in, like, in the next scene, and just his face is torn to pieces, like he's just run through a He's got toilet paper dots everywhere. Yeah, right, exactly. Did you guys know you're supposed to use clippers before you (laughs) shave? (laughs) You are. So, yeah, but oh, and then at the end of the montage too, we get mom's funeral, but her her funeral is in the weird new coexistion religion or whatever. <laughs> I just laughed at another funeral because yeah. that's all they have in this movie: is funerals <laughs> and shitty montages. So okay, so then we we cut to Paolo bringing Beth coffee again. This time in Mexico, is that the following morning, Jake shows up all shaved and no, he doesn't have the cuts and scrapes all over his face and shit. No, in fact, he shows up shaved with day old stubble, which is really impressive. Yeah, Hell of a shave. Right. So, yeah. And also, by the way, Beth clearly loved his beard because he says, so what do you think? And her answer is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. Yeah. I get a lot of it doesn't matter here in the Bosnick household. <laughs> Do you know how long it took to recover from this? It was just so much, so much blood. Really raw. So, but yeah, so Paolo goes to get the van. They have this conversation where she's like, you know, I was sure by now we would be love interests. And really, honestly, other than the oink, oink moment, there's been no sexual tension whatsoever. And uh, you want to ramp that up, maybe? <laughs> yeah. And Jake's like, fine, fine. I'll tilt my face towards yours. But we better get interrupted before we kiss. I'm still holding out for that Hallmark hey, movie. Hey, I've been standing here the whole time. Stop it. Palo's right there to block as soon as they start to almost make out. It's pretty fun. I love that stupid trope because like in real life, then you would be like, oh, thank you, Paolo. And then kiss her. Right. But in the, not in the movie. It's like, oh, we missed the kiss. Now we'll have to wait until another romantic moment. Damn it. It's going to be like four more seasons before they write us together now. Fuck. <laughs> I really wanted to cut to a drive where Paolo's like, so did you guys share burritos all romantic in the desert? Oh, no. no <laughs> oh, he, I you did, him didn't Spanish, even take him but, to um, a lantern uh, <laughs> okay. lit. uh Love Shack. So. Now, Beth, you're handicapped, right? Like, that's genetic, isn't it? That it passes oh, down. Jesus would, you, Christ. would you want a kid with like a weird little flipper foot? I mean, some people are into it, I guess. Jesus some people don't mind. <laughs> yeah, my kid's going to be born with a leg brace. That's a good yeah. point. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, but Paolo's like, never forget Mexico, Jake. It was basically the whole second act, and that's it, right? So, I guess yep. Jake is heading back to the States, and I'd say that makes it a perfect time for us to take a break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will anything that happened in Mexico be relevant to the rest of the film? Will we ever hear Jake even attempt to speak Spanish? Was the entire second act of this movie just it saying yada, yada, yada? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the underwhelming conclusion of One Church. Juan, Juan, I translated the Bible just like you told me to. Excellent, mi amigo. There is no better way to learn Spanish than the words of the Lord. Uh, tell me about it. And your timing is perfect. I was just going to do some Bible readings to uh, Luisa here. Hola. Perfect, indeed. Uh, why don't you just uh, read to us, mi amigo? <laughs> Absolutely. Hello. My name is God. First, there were only black people. Good morning, I said um, to the light bulb. Um, well, se- Senor Chris, uh, how much Spanish did you actually learn before coming here? Oh, I had like a year in high school. Oh, right. Seems like less. Uh, hey, you know, maybe. Let me go. My, my name is Earth. My name is the water. My name is, I guess, Lumiere from the Beauty and the Beast cartoon. You, you know, Latin roots can be confusing. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Where is the library of rape? Come on, seriously? No, actually, that that part is in the Bible. He got that right. Oh, right, right. That's fair. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action in America at a church that isn't teaching government approved coexist Christianity. Right. Ooh. Yeah. And the evil government's here to enforce fascist inclusivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With a dedicated department member. Okay, they they want us to go with a how dare they have a message of love, honor, and compassion for this scene. 
Yeah, so so basically, so we get this preacher and he's like, uh, Jesus, 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 and now we're going to turn over a video to evil brother Randy who's shown at all the churches in the world every Sunday. Right. right. And again, he's supposed to be doing an evil speech here, but his evil is milk toastedism. So he's just like, I think everyone is great. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. It's like a big brother telecast, but he's like two plus two is actually four. So we're, we're yeah. just all agreeing. <laughs> right. The, the evil, evil religion teaches self-reliance and that you're good enough on your own. <laughs> One of the lines in their like evil religion credo is my innermost is always happy. <laughs> so, yeah. Ooh, yes. Right. It's supposed to be all evil. And like the movie forgot to do that for a while. So he's just saying very reasonable things. And then finally the movie's like, no, no, okay. We have to make him have them chant like the evil cult at the beginning to make it look like it's evil like that. Right. But they're still chanting. And they start doing the chant. Yeah. They're still chanting about being happy and finding the good in life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Even the chant doesn't help their point. I thought when they started doing the chant that I was like, oh, he's. Is he going to make them drink poison right now? Okay, now this. That would be clever. I like, yeah. Uh, if you all reach under your seats, go ahead and drink that. <laughs> that is far too plot relevant for this movie. Clearly. <laughs> but so this ends. And of course, while this is going on, we see the evil government guy come in. We know he's evil because he's bald, right? Shaved head equals evil. Yeah, no, yep. it's, it's a lot of bigotry. In yeah, this movie. Exactly. This, this part especially. Heath's people are persecuted. If we've said it once, we've said it a thousand times. <laughs> Struggle's real. So yeah, so he comes in and he watches from the back and he's got this disapproving look on his face. Later on, everybody's filing out of the church and he says, Pastor, if I could have a evil, ominous word with you for a moment. And he's like, oh yeah, sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think this conversation that they have here, I think that's what Republicans think critical race theory is. <laughs> I think this is what they picture. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's like, there's been a complaint that you have been using unapproved hymns at your church service. Yeah, they have, they have an approved playlist and, and curriculum mm -hmm. from the Freedom mm -hmm. of Religion Department. Yes. That he represents. Yeah. Right. And again, this whole evil monologue, he does this whole thing about like, if I go to McDonald's, I want a hamburger there to taste exactly like it does here. And the preacher's like, but, but I want to teach the Jesus I love. And I, I just want to point out, it's been like, Zero years since Christians stopped murdering people for doing like slightly different versions of the Bible. Yes. So for them to be like, oh man, the secularists are coming with their demands to conformity. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, he's getting caught by this evil, bald government guy. And I wanted the guy to like test him and be like, okay, now sing the Unitarian anthem along with me and watch the, the pastor fake it. Just be like, all oh, really, all oh, really. Mm -hmm. Is the is is the no 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 slightly behind you slightly behind you like, <laughs> I know this works like, like Sugarfoot from Rest. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so then we cut to Beth and Jake. They're arriving in his mom's old house. There's a bunch of no trespassing signs because of evil, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, th there's there's a chain in front of the parking lot. And he's like, fascist takeover? This is probably a fascist takeover. Yeah, yeah right. No, we, we go over Might the chain. Be, I mean, we've had chains. The whole, I feel like My name is things. all in lowercase letters on my driver's license. Don't worry <laughs> about it. We can go through this chain. <laughs> and luckily, mom has laid them out a plot of the movie newspapers collection. Yes. So for those of you keeping track, this is now the second plot of the movie newspapers collection. Yes. Well, but now before we can get to it, though, we have this bizarre fucking moment where it, like the movie almost said I'll be damned if we're going to have another series of flashbacks now because a guy shows up at the house to arrest them for trespassing right they're at they're at his mom's old house and this a security guard comes and says you're under arrest for trespassing and then we get a quick scene of Randy getting called by the security guard and him's going no no that's no, my brother it's fine let him go and then we get a reboot on the last on the last fucking scene where they're like, okay, now can we have the uh, scrapbooking uh, go over the scrapbook thing? Okay, does that make any sense though? That mom would have like a yarn and pushpins area to track this conspiracy made of newspapers, <laughs> like that's, because Beth's there too, and like she might as well be like, hey, this is all. It's all on the internet. To, like, these are news. You're looking this at what, paper newspapers. This is actually fine, the like, plot of the movie we've been experiencing. None of this matters. I've, also, <laughs> I've told you this stuff. Yes. Right. That's the other thing is Beth has been explaining this to him the whole fucking time. Do you think those are secret newspapers? Do you hear? <laughs> That's crazy. 
as they're looking it over, Jake goes, this doesn't make any sense. And I wrote in my notes, this movie slash someone describing this movie. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he's like, wait a minute. This, According to this paper, there are special camps for people who disagree with Randy's religion. And Beth is like, have you not been listening to any of the exposition? This movie's been all exposition <laughs> and you haven't let you haven't caught on with anybody. So then she decides to tell us what's going on over top of a remember what happened in the movie. Montage. <laughs> we are now we are now at one every 19 minutes. We are. Wow. That's they literally true. That was four. Yes, exactly. If you're counting all montages, not just remembering montages at this point, we were at a montage every nine minutes yep. of the film. It's it's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so she so Beth starts telling him the story about how you know they turned all the religions the same and and they gave all the churches a bunch of money to open homeless shelters and <laughs> boo boo. First they came for the Nazis. And we <laughs> then they set up this great social safety net and rooted out bigotry in general. And then I'm done. She's actually done there. Yeah, I am done. tries to say something else and has nothing. Well, here's what she says. She says, and then the gates of hell opened. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But after a while, she's like, oh, wait. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> the gates of hell also opened at, at, the, <laughs> at the end of her stupid speech. Right. Now, to be clear, she means that metaphorically, but metaphorically for what? What is it a metaphor for? Because she just goes, you know, they gave the churches a bunch of money to open more homeless shelters and then the gates of hell opens. Like with the, do you mean homeless people got help? Shelter? And Satan was like, Mwah. <laughs> yeah, the movie forgot for there to be a negative consequence. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So the next morning, Randy and his antichrist entourage show up at mom's house to meet with Jake and Beth. It's apparently it's supposed to have been like three or four years. You can't tell because nobody ever gets older in this movie. They just die. <laughs> so, but he's, you know, he has to meet his new nieces and nephews that that because his wife is apparently a baby factory. And then they finally settle down. The two of them settle down and Jake's like, so, you know, how's the, uh, how's the plot going? Heard your czar of religion. That's mm -hmm. cool, right? Mm-hmm. But then he reveals that they've figured out his plan. Yeah. He, he says like, yeah, I know, you know, I've spent the whole night reading up on you. I'm pretty sure you're the antagonist, man. One could say that I did my own research. And <laughs> I think we can all agree that's the best way to learn things. You're the Antichrist. Yeah. And of course, Randy, the evil Randy is like, hey, man, you know, we've done something that got that did away with all religious bigotry and all these hate crimes and all these hate speeches. And Jake is like, how dare you? Yes. That's not how we were raised. <laughs> yes. He, at one point, he literally says, sure, it seems good. And then infers, but people are still gay. Yeah, right. That's exactly it. Hey, can we switch tones? Because it's crazy. Each thing we said. Can you we do just, the, you, will you maybe? sit in this chair and I'll be the good guy in a other movie? <laughs> I think I'm the good guy, man. Yeah. Are we doing a sliding doors thing where I'm going to release my movie and you're going to release yours? Well, see which one everyone likes better. There's an amazing moment here, too. Jake goes, you know, Randy, you should know that there is a God. And you're not him. And I just, I pictured the fucking screenwriter sitting back afterwards, lighting a cigar, <laughs> just trying to reckon with his own awesomeness after he wrote that. High five in himself line. and missing. Yeah. yeah. When he said that, I wrote in my notes, you're not my real God. My real God would let me eat all the ice cream and be all the homophobe that I wanted. <laughs> so yeah, so right, Randy drives off in a huff, right? He's like, I can't, this is this fucking scene is stupid. I'm done. And he leaves. They've been there for a minute and a half. Yeah. But then, and, and Jake's like, damn it, I'm going back to Mexico. This scene sucks. And Beth is like, no, no, we don't have any more money in the travel budget. You have to stay here and fix <laughs> Christianity. She gives him the, I almost went with best worst compliment because she tells Jake, you have the second most passion I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. And he is very excited to be the second best according to her. So he gets reinvigorated and he's like, all right, you know what? Get me to the pulpit. And that's his tagline for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. But. That's dumb. Like, I wanted him to just go to a pulpit right now and be like, oh, there's, no, there's nobody here. Oh, this doesn't, no one's that doesn't I, help my at all. thing was too literal. And everyone disagrees with me. <laughs> Even yes. if there were people here, this would matter none at all. Damn it. Jews exist. <laughs> so, 
Is this thing on? The Heath and Wright story. What? So then we cut to, so Beth has blindfolded Jake and she's driving him to, to a surprise. And of course, because this movie is so fucking stupid, his and Mania Rest line here is, you know, I can't see anything out of this. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, new theory, X new theory, rest. Jake has severe brain damage <laughs> and the movie doesn't know it. Oh, okay. Possibly also Beth because <laughs> there's no reason for the blindfold. No. Well, so because it's because they're going to a secret underground Christianity factory, Heath. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are. Mm-hmm. What was going to happen? Like, how does the big reveal accomplish anything? Was was he going to walk into the beginning, like the lobby of a secret Bible factory and be like, is this a secret Bible factory? And then like ruin it and run outside all scared? Well, that's that. So they're, they're, <laughs> they, they've gone here awfully quickly, but it's supposed to be like a secret hideout and nobody can know exactly where it is. Right. That's yeah. why she's a blindfold. Now he's part of the resistance. I, I feel like he's just going to be really disappointed when he, she takes off that blindfold and isn't naked. But that's, I think, what they were going for. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, you're still wearing the brace. OK. I'm so Jesus. Paolo was right about you. So they show up at the secret Bible factory, and this is where we're going to meet Beth's scrappy crew of underground Christians that they were pretty sure they were going to build a sequel around. Yep. Okay. This is the hardest I laughed yep. in the movie. <laughs> the character, Rachel, this girl was like, hey, I do an English accent. And they were like, is it good? Like, people think you're from England. She was like, you tell me, Gabna. And they were like, wow, <laughs> fucking flawless. So she says hi. And Jake goes, where are you from? And she says... England. Just in general. Just England. <laughs> I laughed for a while. <laughs> a fucking while. <laughs> oh, there was a great like Christian nationalism moment where she's like, yes, in this movie, Christianity is illegal, but it's way more illegal in, in England. It's still way better in America than it is in Europe, though, at least. Yeah. That's her purpose in the fucking movie. But then Jake explains that he wants them to he wants to help them fix Jesus. Right. Right. He um he looks up and they've got like push pins of I don't even fucking know, but red and blue push pins all over a map that he's transfixed by. I think they that was their churches or their target churches or whatever. Mm -hmm. Seems like they wouldn't be just perfectly evenly spread out across the United <laughs> States. It's fine. <laughs> whatever. Jake's like, yeah, I want to help with this evenly spread out. That doesn't make any sense. I, but I do want to help. And they're like, cool with. What though? We don't. Yeah, really, we don't know what we're doing either. We we're you making carry Bibles. I don't these know these boxes here. We have like two hundred. He also he tries for this emotional scene. It does not go well. There's I he literally almost chokes when he tries to cry. <laughs> right. He this this actor almost chokes to death on his attempt to act. He's so bad at <laughs> acting. He has become a danger to himself and others. I can't act out of this paper bag. I'm going to get it. <laughs> and, and gentlemen, will you uh, correct me if I'm wrong? Really? I, I, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but is the point of this monologue hate speech, schmate, schmeech? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. He gives this <laughs> okay. whole monologue about how I saw all this unity coming and I didn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. He's describing the Pathos terms of service like they're a bomb filler. <laughs> Okay, seriously, one of the lines was, if you speak hate about people in other religions, get this. They call it fucking hate speech yes! now. They call that hate, and that's a crime. Did you believe that? A crime. <laughs> yeah, they tell them about all the pastor re-education camps, and I'm like, well, if you teach them to type, at least they could get a useful trade afterwards. <laughs> or something. I, don't, I don't know I'm all the way against that. And then at the end, he's like, look, I get it. But the real original meaning of church was to be called out. And no, it wasn't, by the way. That's a stupid thing preachers say all the time. But no, it wasn't. And then he goes, so call me out. And I wanted so badly for just everyone involved to roast him. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel throws her hand up. Oh, your haircut makes it look like you were molested at scout camp, but you liked it. And she <laughs> go around in a circle. Also, we were just talking about hate speech. So I'm calling you out as a bigot. I don't yeah, understand right. why you said that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the evil message is that everybody is good, even the gays, and he's ready to fix that problem with the world. And so this inevitably devolves into a him getting ready to spread real Christianity <laughs> okay. montage. It's montage. not a montage. 
It's another. He's, the he's, montages he's, are growing faster. To, they're about to give birth to a montage. I know this. this the, <laughs> the montages are getting closer and closer together. They were Braxton Hicks montages. Now they're the real montage. <laughs> The montage makes it to the first trimester, then you have no. So right. he does the uh, all right. Get me to the pulpit thing again, mm -hmm. and yeah, we get a, we get a montage of not yet getting to the pulpit. It's just him like sort of prepping, Reading. and then out of nowhere, <laughs> enormous jacked porn star just walks through yes. the middle of the frame for no reason. Just the most beautiful handsome man just st and look this is a Christian movie the background extras look like the word potato was brought to life by a Disney character except for this fucking model who's just like nope I am in the background too he has these watermelon but and, and he walks by in slow motion carrying a large box so that he could really show off his guns and like I mean, yeah, I like <laughs> yeah. Him off. no one <laughs> but no one acknowledges him no why are you carrying a beach ball through the frame? I don't understand. What does that guy do? Are you doing clap push-ups on top of me? So, yeah, so we meet him. Or don't, we don't meet him. He doesn't have a we spoken don't line meet him. No. Yep. He says no words. I thought no. I was starting to go into like a gay fugue state because of how boring this movie was. Right? That they, they were just going to step through the screen like the girl from the ring and give me a hand -o. Okay. And then, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> I feel like he could just rip it off if he wanted to, though, right? Like, oh, oh, absolutely. But he wouldn't. But he no, wouldn't. he's, like he's probably be surprisingly gentle. Unless you asked him to. He seems like a nice guy. He seems like he has a good personality. I'm just yeah. saying. I, you know what? I looked him up on IMDb. I'll shoot him an email and see if he wants to <laughs> no. go on a date of the seven senses with us because <laughs> the other guy didn't. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. So, but this montage ends with Jake going out to preach to a packed church, right? And he says, I'd like all of you to start by opening your Bibles to the book of Matthew and everybody in the crowd is like, murmur, 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 Bibles? Matthew? What? And the little assistant guy is like, uh, excuse me, we don't have the Bible anymore. We have this new Jewish binder. <laughs> <And> he, <laughs> he throws it on the ground. Yes, he does. <laughs> Keep in mind what fucking level of crazy you have to be to be like, and then the protagonist throws another person's religious text on the ground as a fun goof on their beliefs. Right? Yes. Like, we are the scathing atheists and we don't throw people's <laughs> religious texts on the ground. I mean, now I want to. I've got a lot well, of yeah, now bits that are occurring to me. Right. You don't want to let him get ahead of you. Oh, Bible egg drop. Nice. Fine. Well, you know what? We'll talk about it as an off air. Off air. Oh, yeah, that could be the way we ring in the new year. Sure. You know, with a Quran. Yeah. So, but but everybody's like, we don't have Bibles. We don't use Bibles anymore. What are you fucking talking? What are you from three years ago? Come on, this is get with the program. And he's like, that's okay. I brought enough Bibles for everyone. You get a Bible. Yeah. You get a Bible. Right. You We're actually going to get a fucking reaching under your pew scene here. Apparently, it's actually better than that. We don't get the reaching under right. the pew scene because these cheap fuckers who made this movie didn't have Bibles for all their extras. <laughs> You're right. They didn't. <laughs> and they were in a church. <laughs> they had a Bible factory scene moments ago. And they yep. didn't have enough Bibles. Yeah. Couldn't get their hands on 26 Bibles. No. Nope. And oh, and also we see that Randy's wife the evil brother preacher's wife is watching this on TV. Apparently this made the, him giving out Bibles made the news. Mm -hmm. So this turns into a, you guessed it, Jake preaching the real gospel montage. <laughs> yeah, for, it has been four minutes since the last <laughs> montage, people. We are reaching montageception. At this point, <laughs> the montages are going to be within other montages. <laughs> yeah. And this this is a montage of him saying, you know, clever Bible stuff during sermons, theoretically, but they couldn't actually write that because right. that doesn't really exist. Yep. Or I guess maybe they did write it, but because of the plot of this fucking movie, it would have to be mostly slur words for Jewish people. <laughs> so <laughs> producers were like, we have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, right, right. No, it's it's literally a montage of him inaudibly talking in front of different stained glass. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. And so this montage ends 
with the gang getting back to their hideout and talking about like tr- trying to explain the blindfolded thing in case you were confused going like did we double back did we use our all the decoy vans okay nobody yep. could trace us back we're here. all in the same good shape yep we're all equal shapes here in this little crime <laughs> gang there's no one and then i want to talk about the tommy flanagan moment because very clearly, someone gave enough to the Kickstarter or it was someone's son. And he was like, I want to be the cop who bursts in and says, <laughs> get on the ground. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was only given one take. And the performance he gives us is, get on the ground. <laughs> 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 and they fucking kept it. What I love about this scene is that it has a very, oh shit, guys, we forgot to film the part where he gets arrested feel to it, <laughs> right? He just, they, they get to the, um, you, you know, they're like, all right, well, nobody will ever find us. Let's all go to bed. And then we see Tommy Flanagan come in. And then from then on, he's in prison, right? Yeah. So we cut to the prison where we're going <laughs> to. Or we're going to get a being in is prison gonna, montage. There's going to be a montage. <laughs> I guess so. Yep. Yeah. It's another it's montage. Slow-mo jail montage. One minute and 45 seconds yep. since yep. the last montage. <laughs> yes. Zeno's montage here. Four, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But seriously, if, if what actually is happening in this movie universe was really, really happening, we would watch him like in slow-mo, walk through jail, walk out into the yard, and then get like high fives from all the neo-Nazis because he's on that team. Right. Yep. Yep. Sure the fuck is. And, there's just one thing that I have to talk about. It's such a tiny detail, but this jail outfit they put him in is just sparkling and crisp yeah. and newly ironed. It might as well be custom fit with like a fucking, you know, little matching handkerchief. Is in that the top a waist kit? Pocket. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's almost custom, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, but, but <laughs> I'm late enough in the show, right? We've we've already yeah, done that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, well, they don't listen. That guy's fuck Kim Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. Patrons, I apologize. You don't get this joke. We're referring to an ad that we did earlier with some. Really yeah, dumb listen copy, to the so, end. That's yes, where so. I do our best parasocial content. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So but Paulo comes to visit Jake in jail at the end of the montage. And he's like, hey, man, this is this is really it's devastating for the plot of the movie. We got to get you out of here. And he's like, no, man, I'm spreading so much Jesus in this jail. And it's like, didn't the movie say that you go to a special prison that's just for pastors who are preaching real Jesus when this happens? It's, 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 it's. Yeah. I also like that he's like, hey, how's the village? And Apollo's like, you know, still poor. Probably could have used some of that money that you spent on. Bibles for everybody who could afford a Bible and didn't want one. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to Paolo visiting MRI headquarters. And if you base it just on the music, you would assume that he is going to steal their Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's Ocean's Eleven music for sure. And Paolo, like he walks out of one of their offices and puts on sunglasses and he's all smug and he walks past them smiling. What? happened there he's the inside man at the evil nice church that's not bigoted i guess what was supposed to be going on here is he just told randy that that randy's brother got arrested for all his evil anti-religious freedom laws or whatever right but yeah it certainly plays like more than that happened like he just hatched a fucking plan or something but no it's just that so randy calls his team in his media team. And he's like, Hey, you got to get my brother out of prison. And Tanya's like, well, I don't know if we can do that because, and he starts yelling at Tanya. And I'm like, why is everybody always yelling at Tanya? <laughs> Leave Tanya alone. Tanya's awesome. I really wanted the rest of the movie to be just a, an HR meeting with Tanya. Just being like, and uh, in future, uh, when I, when I am frustrated, uh, I'll, I'll write you an email and we'll be talking about <laughs> your, uh, pain points and tension points uh, in those occurrences. <laughs> Yeah, but so we get that. Then we cut to Beth. She's she's having dinner with her parents. And I love so much that they tried to make this like lovely suburban home into the White House's title. The room. White House. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, if I'm I'm taking this scene a little seriously. Can either of you guys think of something that I don't know, maybe an extra could do to entirely distract me from anything that is said in it? Hmm. Why don't how about he brings in a plastic pitcher from fucking Pizza Hut and starts dumping iced tea loudly into everybody's glass? That would do it. No matter how hard she is told 
Stop. Yes. She's like, no, we actually don't need any juice. He's like, I'm doing my fucking juice. I'm doing the juice. I'm doing the juice. I wrote in my notes, Heath the waiter. Beth at one point is like, I actually don't want juice. He's like, you're a fucking cripple. Don't you talk to me. You're getting extra. You know what? I'm taking your glass and you're getting the pitcher. There you go. Paolo was right about you. Okay, I was thinking of I was thinking of enormous porn guy just walking in naked and uh, pouring juice, actually. Uh, so, okay. Good. There you yeah, go. No, yeah. We'll was settled. That would have derailed. You had juice as a factor. Yeah. Yeah. So he gives a nice siege. Yeah. So, but they're having this like awkward dinner where nobody's talking to anybody. And finally, the first lady turns to her husband and she's like, What's your problem with Jesus in the first place? And he's like, Oh my God, are we just going to talk about the plot again? Jesus. <laughs> such a lack of creativity on the part of the writers, right? Oh, when Beth says it's not a religion, it's a relationship, <laughs> I booed Gross. out loud and Anna was sitting next to me playing video games and jumped and I was like, sorry, someone said religion, not a relationship. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Yeah, no, it's, the, and that is, by the way, the big turn, that like his, the president's heart grew three sizes that day, right? That's the moment when she says, I, you know, it's not about a religion, it's about a relationship when it all starts to click for him. <laughs> Whatever. He should be like, Okay, well, I'm just not that into Jesus spending time or <laughs> anything. So just he goes, quit pouting, daughter. And she's like, I'm not pouting. I'm not a good enough actor for that. I was praying for you. The script assures me you're pouting. Yeah, right, right. And the mom's like, why don't we go watch a movie? We have a movie theater right in the residence here at the White House, which we're in. Don't pay any attention to the polystyrene crown molding. God damn it. It's the White House. <laughs> we should walk through the ovular office area and then to the theater that we have because that's where we are is the White House. I also have a private gym with super cool weights and I hang out all the time with the rock Dwayne Johnson. Stop, mom. You just, stop making up stuff. <laughs> all right. So but now Jake gets out of jail because, you know, he knows people and uh, he goes back to Christianity HQ to meet with everybody. Now, this is the anti-penultimate scene of the fucking movie, and it starts with all of them just sort of sitting around and one of them going, so what now? <laughs> it's always the exciting of a the great movie, film. Chris? Yes, Do you mean right. in the movie? <laughs> Believe it or not, Chris, another fucking montage. Let me spoil it for yeah, you. Yeah, actually it is too. Yeah, because they're like, well, you know, as a condition of your release, you're not allowed to go to a church anymore. And he's like, you know, Jesus didn't have a church. Peter didn't have a church. We don't need no stinking church. <laughs> yeah. And then we go to a goddamn montage of them setting up for their tent revival. Oh so my God. The fucking hero turn of this movie in montage form, of course, is be more like Greg Locke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Watching them getting barred from Dunkin' Donuts screaming outside yeah, the right, door. Right, yes. Yeah, but they're going to win this movie, apparently, with a goddamn air bud level technicality that you guys said building, not tent. <laughs> yeah, you can do Christianity Christ. with this one simple trick. <laughs> it's, it's like a shitty tent that doesn't count as a church technically. And so they're all getting ready for this giant porn star muscular guy is there and he's like, you guys want me to do security? And they're like, no, I, I'm sure we could just, the uh, police can handle no, the cars fine. coming. I don't think we're going to need security. He's like, all right, you want me to just stand in the back and flex? And they're like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, can you do finger push-ups? <laughs> I bet you can. So, okay. So, meanwhile, the president's aide, Paul, is meeting with the FBI director about all these troublesome tent revivals they're having in the town of America. <laughs> 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 right. And the president's like, I want you, James, going to um, stop all the Christianity in the Carolinas that's going to happen tonight. Yes. And he's like, sorry, do you want to just say what you said again so you can hear it? <laughs> I'm going to write it down this time. Did you have like a name for the play you ran on Martin Luther King Jr.? <laughs> you know oh, Jesus. Just a burp and a burp burp. You know what I'm saying? Co and Harold. Wow. Well, I should say, because Paul is like, you know, we wouldn't want something to happen like that happened to the president's daughter at that evil cult where they all killed themselves, would we? Wink. And it's like, man, you got to be way less ambiguous in your evil messaging, Paul. <laughs> right. The, F yeah. the FBI guy is like, I'm sorry, you want me to a stage a mass suicide? That's really, co can we just arrest them? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so we get that scene. Then we cut over to Jake preaching at his tent. The audience, the extras, 
bless their little hearts, they're trying to pretend to be rapt by his his speech. <laughs> this actor, not only is the line boring because it's preacher line, but this actor is so bad he can't, you know, he wouldn't know what a good orator sounded like if he heard one, right? He let alone fucking pretending to be one. So they're trying, but they are falling a fucking sleep in their chairs. Okay, it goes from like, morning to evening in mm -hmm. this scene. We see that happen. And like, I think they actually did that in real life to these extras because you, <laughs> you look at their faces and they're, they must be shouting out like, oh my God, this is so boring. And then it had to be cut for yeah. sure. Yeah. Dude, there was a three hour pause before you did the rest of that sentence. Are you doing a montage or something? <laughs> We've been here for nine hours. So yeah, so but now it's it's late at night. He's still just preaching away, and Jake says from the pulpit, "We don't need government handouts." And then out of the darkness, Randy shows up, and he goes, "Yes, we do." <laughs> <laughs> and they then proceed to have the fight that they have had two other times in this movie in front of the entire church. Yes, I'm writing in my nose, preach off, preach off. But no, fucking, like, he just, in front of a <laughs> bunch of people who are all holding up their phones and, and recording it, uh, Randy starts going on about, I don't care about the little people, I'm evil, I finger steeple in the shower, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and they, uh, to, to the point where his handlers start showing up and, and they're like, dude, we need to drag you go. physically, right. bodily off of the, uh, out of the thing. But, but <laughs> apparently that was pretty hard on Jake because Jake has collapsed from to the ground. Yes. From how hard it is. So we watch him do a Rocky Five. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> get up at the pulpit. <laughs> he like, does. Fucking Burgess Meredith. Get up, you bum. You got to preach some more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, son of a bitch, because Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> So he gets up. He's got this whole moment where he's like, I can't get. Oh, yes. I found the power in Christ to stand up. And then he's supposed to deliver his like, you know, his home run, knock yes. it out of the park ending. And it's just doctrinal nuance. It's nothing. It's not. He literally is like, <laughs> right. And the music is swung. -da 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 -da. He's like, my brother's a stupid poopy face. It's, <laughs> his last monologue is so bad that everyone's supposed to rush forward for an altar call. That's the finale of the movie. Mm -hmm. And you watch the extras be like, oh, that was it. Okay. Um, so everybody, that, that was it. That was the end. I know. <laughs> I didn't hear it in there. Uh, okay. You know how Rocky didn't give a weepy speech to Tommy Gunn <laughs> after getting up in the alley in that fight scene? A very weepy, I don't have the spoons for this speech. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And that's all. That's the end of the fucking movie like so many movies that we've watched in the past no doubt meant to be part one of a series about the apocalypse and destined sure. to never have a sequel mm -hmm. did they think they want like did the movie think that the good guys according to the movie won the movie based on that i don't know the weepy speech ending well we do know that they think weepy speeches win debates so maybe they win <laughs> okay. whole movies right yeah. i don't know okay i did enjoy that the music people decided to not call the winner of the movie the, mu the music was clearly <laughs> like hedging its bets <laughs> on whether this is winning it was just like doom doom we'll see what happens all right well i guess that's gonna do it for our review of one church but that's not gonna do it for the episode just yet because we still need to march back into this fire next week so eli tell us What's on deck? Well, Noah, you, Heath, and I will be taking the week off for American Thanksgiving, or as it's known in the rest of the world, Genocide Celebration Day. Mm -hmm. So we'll be taking a trip back to a simpler time, a better time. I'm talking, of course, about our live show from QED. Vax 2. Oh, fuck yeah. I've been looking forward Ooh. to everybody getting a chance to hear that one. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 379 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skating Alias, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Credit Global, wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robinson takes over social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rise Light, Make People Dress on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Martin Clark, and Wishes with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Wright, Delight Boston, I'm No Illusions, promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you at the Breakfast Club close. 
The president of the United States went on to make Mexico pay for that wall of separation <laughs> of church and state. Tanya went on to start her own global anti-church with blackjack and hookers. Whatever happened to that Adam guy? Right. Or that village in Mexico? I feel like that all had to come back, right? No? I guess not. They were setting up for the sequel. See, Adam will be in the Jupy View by a lot in the trilogy. What happened to Big Handjob Guy? Oh, we know what happened to Big Handjob Guy. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is almost custom? (laughs) That's That's some of my favorite bullshit of all time. When I hit paste on that, I was like, oh, God. To to have the money to make the entire ad about just an almost custom suit storm? (laughs) Yeah, what what the fuck does that mean? Like, you call up Raycon and you, like, list a bunch of custom specs, but at the last second, they hang up on you and that's it. And then you just get the right... What the fuck? Almost? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.